Prime Minister commenting on the monarchy, the royal visit and its costs, and the government intends to not borrow as much as it did before. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Simonet with your JCN News for this Wednesday, March 30th. The royal visit of the Bahamas of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince William and Kate Middleton, placed the Bahamas on the global stage. This coming out of Prime Minister Philip Davis's communication in the House of Assembly this morning on the occasion of the couple's royal visit to the Bahamas. Here's JCN's Lizzie Bastian with the details. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge visit to the Bahamas last weekend formed a part of their tour of the Caribbean to mark the platinum jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, Prime Minister Philip Davis in presenting a communication on the background, details and outcome of the royal visit in the House of Assembly this morning, says he was delighted to welcome the couple who brought with them some 70 journalists from around the world. This, he notes, allowed the Bahamas to show all we have to offer. As well as celebrating the Platinum Jubilee, the itinerary for the royal visit was designed to achieve specific objectives. Our royal guests were accompanied by an international media contingent of approximately 70 accredited journalists representing every major media house in the world. Therefore, each place that the delegation visited and each event and activity they engaged in received global press coverage. We wish to seize upon this significant opportunity for the Bahamas to shift how we are seen on the world stage, as well as sending a strong message that post Dorian and post COVID, the Bahamas is open for business. We also wished to project the Bahamian culture to show that we are much more than just sun, sad, and sea. Along with the fact that the royal visit was an opportunity to present the Bahamas to the world, it was also an opportunity for Prime Minister Davis to reiterate the country's stance on climate change and also strengthen the relationship between the Bahamas and other world leaders. As part, Madam Speaker, of the strong shift the government of the Bahamas is making in its conduct of foreign policy. During the COP26 conference on climate change in Glasgow last November, I invited a number of heads of state to visit the Bahamas. The two-day official visit by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge marks a significant development in the relationship between the United Kingdom and the Bahamas. We are pleased that we are one of only three Caribbean countries being visited as part of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. This reinforces our wish to project the Bahamas as a leading voice in the region. As we approach almost 50 years of sovereignty, the United Kingdom continues to be one of our closest friends and allies. As he spoke specifically to the relationship of the Bahamas and the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Davis says as one of the G7 countries, the UK is well placed to support the country's international position with investors and lenders through guarantees and other measures. Following on from the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union of Brexit, as it is widely known. We know changes in their foreign policy priorities. We want the Bahamas to be at the forefront of consideration of any enhanced trading relationships. Discussions are underway about providing more scholarships for Bahamian students and exploring ways to expand the exchange of goods and services between our two countries. In particular, we are keen for members of the Bahamian creative and cultural communities to have an opportunity to work in the UK. The Prime Minister adds that visits by world leaders attract an enormous amount of attention and help strengthen ties between these countries and its people. He notes that in recent years, the Bahamas has had to rely on the support and goodwill of many nations during our time of national tragedy to support our national development. For JCN News, I'm Lissy Bastian. Well, the Prime Minister also offering insight into the overall cost of the royal couple's visit. Much attention was given to the cost of the visit and why the government was footing the bill for the couple. 
Before the Duke and Duchess arrived in country last Thursday, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Governor General, Jack Thompson, told the media that the government would incur the cost of the visit as such trips customarily come at the expense of the host nation. Prime Minister Davis telling parliamentarians today that with it being only four days since the visit, the government is still awaiting the final accounting. However, he says as is customary with royal visits, costs are shared between the sovereign grant, the host country and the UK Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office. This visit was no exception. In line with this, the royal household borne the cost of travel to and from the Bahamas. A corporate donor sponsored the Governor General's reception. In line with the Royal Protocol, we are asked not to publicize private sponsorship too much to detract from the event. The government of Bahamas bore accommodation costs for two nights. Other third party costs, such as the cultural events, which we showed which to showcase were paid to Bahamian artisans and creative production talents. This was our choice. We want to treat our visitors to those displays and stimulate our creative economy, which has been flatlined in recent years. As for all other costs, Prime Minister Davis notes that security and domestic travel are the internal costs of various government ministries and agencies and will not require additional expenditure outside of existing budgets. This, he adds, is the usual practice adopted by all countries regarding all official visitors. Meantime, as the Bahamas approaches 50 years of being an independent nation, there has been much debate regarding the relevancy and role of the British monarchy, and with many Bahamians suggesting that the Bahamas do away with the Queen as the head of state and the country becomes a republic. The Duke and Duchess's tour of the Caribbean inspired a degree of commentary about the monarchy's role in Belize, Jamaica and in the Bahamas. Prime Minister Davis addressed those commentaries, noting that it was expected, especially in modern democracies. He read a statement from Prince William issued after the couple's return to the UK, whom PM Davis says was well aware of the conversation surrounding their visit and the public discussions about the past and future role of the monarchy in the country. Foreign tours, and I quote, foreign tours are an opportunity to reflect. We learn so much. What is on the minds of prime ministers, the hopes and ambitions of school children, the day-to-day -day challenges faced by families and communities. I know that this tour has brought into even sharper focus questions about the past and the future. In Belize, Jamaica, and the Bahamas, that future is for the people to decide upon. That said, the Prime Minister says as we move forward in our celebrations of the 50th anniversary of independence, I hope there is a lively discussion and debate about our future, about who we are and what we want to be. I agree with the Duke when he says that it is for the Bahamian people to decide upon their future. For now, it is up to say that my administration will listen to, participate in and fully support these discussions. In time, we can be sure that the will of the Bahamian is always being fully expressed. The government intends to borrow less money than allotted in last year's budget. Economic Affairs Minister Senator Michael Halkidis tells reporters this much off the sidelines of a signing ceremony for a grant given by the European Union in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank on Wednesday morning. And so, I don't want to give you a number, but trending in the direction where uh, we'll come in less than the deficit that was originally forecast and more importantly looking ahead uh, we expect to have a significantly less borrowing requirement going into the 2022-2023 budget. Now Minister Halkidis didn't want to give a definitive figure however he says the country's revenue is strengthening with the reopening of the economy and relaxation of health restrictions. However he adds that though the revenue is performing there's still a lot of bills that the government has to liquidate. And so I don't want to give you a number but trending in the direction where uh, we'll come in less than the deficit that was originally forecast and more importantly looking ahead. Uh, we expect to have a significantly less borrowing requirement going into the 2022-2023 budget. 
Last year, the House of Assembly authorized the then Minister of Finance to raise the sum of $871,645,371 to be borrowed, according to a resolution passed and signed by the Chief Clerk on June 21, 2021. And after a more than 20-year hiatus, the Bahamas Golden Jubilee Games are officially set for July 2023. This much coming from Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Mario Boleg in the lower chambers this morning. So far as the 2023 Bahamas Golden Jubilee Games are concerned, the Bahama Games Secretary is already operational and has developed a template for the Golden Jubilee Games. Among its early recommendations, uh, to once again pursue the game's tradition of maximizing the participation of a wide cross-section of suitable qualified members of the Bahamian community. The selected persons will be attached to a 12 volunteer committee that will assist the game secretary. The intent is to have a widespread personal input and diverse ownership of the Golden Jubilee Games. Sports for the Golden Jubilee will include softball, basketball, track and field, lawn tennis, swimming, soccer, beach volleyball, baseball, Olympic and regatta sailing, and golf, among others. The minister notes that the 16 national sports federations will each supply their own volunteers for the Games. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.